Voice.com and my Google Hangout on uh, VoiceOver on the inner game. And I'm so excited. I've never done this before. We've never met live in a video stream like this. It's our first one. So if there are, uh, you know, it's, it's live and let's just see what happens. So I'm so excited. The name of our program today is called How to Stop Getting Ready to Get Ready. And it's what every first time voice talent needs to know to gain confidence and self-assurance behind the mic. And that's experienced talent too. I'm Susan Berkeley, and uh, I am the voice that says thank you for using AT&T and welcome to City Phone Banking, among others. I'm a uh, hey, welcome uh, to GreatVoice.com and my Google. There, see, see, there we go. Turn off the monitor. So, uh, in any case, I'm an experienced uh, professional voice talent. I've been doing this for a long, long time. I'm still a working voice talent, and I am the president of the Great Voice Company, where we train people, help people start successful voiceover careers. So I'm really excited that you joined me today, took the time out of your busy day, because we're going to talk about an aspect of voiceover success that people often don't talk about, which is what I call the inner game. And those mindset issues that are beyond the sound of your voice, it's beyond you know what kind of microphone you have and how your home studio is, it's, it's the mindset issues that I've found that are really, really responsible for whether or not you make it in this business and, and actually in life in general and it's something that very few people talk about I mean you hear about it in you know from Tony Robbins and from people like that but uh, really nobody has ever applied this to voiceover in a way that's really unique so I just want you to right now turn off your cell phone get rid of all of the dings and the dongs of your electronic life so that you can really we can really be together for this time, uh, you know, you just you can live without texting and chatting. I think for this the next hour or so that we're together, uh, because I really have some great information to share with you. And the inner game, once you understand these, it's key to skyrocketing you to voiceover success. Now, I guarantee you that what I'm going to present is something you've never heard before. It's based upon the work of my mentor, Dr. Norberto Capi, who's from Brazil. He's a psychoanalyst and a researcher in the field of human potential, author of over 45 books at least. And he is uh, the host of, of an international television show and radio show and just is a terrific, terrific resource for you as you're starting or enhancing a voiceover career and you're, you know, maybe you're going solo, maybe you want to uh, start a money hobby, but I know this means a, a lot to you. I really, really do. It meant a lot to me and, and you know, of, of all the thousands of people that I've trained through the years, everybody's got their own reasons for doing voiceover, but, but they're all valid and they're all extremely personal and they're all, they mean so much. I mean, you know, this is something that you've probably been thinking about doing for a long time. It's uh, something you probably have uh, an innate gift around your voice, uh, something you think would be a tremendous amount of fun or maybe a, a home-based money hobby or a new career for you. Uh, maybe you're about to uh, get retired or start a new transitional phase in your life, or maybe you're just checking this out, and that's fine too. But I really respect and I honor that. And I, at the Great Voice Company, I want to bring you as many of the important success tools that I can to really help you out. And, you know, we've been training people since 1987. And we really are the recognized leader in voiceover training. So uh, this is really the newest piece of the puzzle that I want to bring to you uh, that I think can really help you. And I have been offering bits and pieces of this, but never in a way that I'm going to be doing for it now. So what I, I've came up with a term that seems to really resonate with people, which is I call Gritger. <laughs> I made it up. You won't find it in the dictionary. And Gritger stands for getting ready to get ready. And it's that state that the person finds themselves in where they've been trying and trying and trying to get 
started in voiceover and you know maybe they've made a demo or maybe they've gotten some training or maybe they've just been thinking about this and talking about this forever and they just can seem to get their career launched or maybe you're feeling stuck or you know maybe you're at a point where you, you know you can't get past a certain point well that's Gritker and that's what today's training is going to be all about helping you so this manifests as you know talking about voiceover but not doing it your friends and your family are starting to roll your eyes you know when you come around talking about your voice of a career that someday one day you're going to be doing it it manifests if you have invested in equipment that you've never used or training or maybe you've done your demo and never sent it out you know I know people like that that have maybe just sent out invested all this money and time in putting a demo together and then you send out five copies of it and and you wonder what happened <laughs> you wonder why you're not getting any work but you just can't force yourself you can't make yourself do what you know you need to do to get your career off the ground and it's not just in voiceover it's in many things that people do to improve themselves and their lives for example a lot of people have uh, you know that exercise bicycle or that treadmill sitting in a corner of the bedroom that's really a very expensive pantyhose holder or tie rack you know you know the one that I mean that you know you should be using but you, you just don't and what happens is that all that stuff just circulates around on eBay exactly you know exactly what I mean so I don't want that to happen to you I don't want you to have to put your microphone up on eBay and I want you to really do it and have a very very successful career but most important of all, you know, Gritger means that you have talent that you've been given that you are not sharing. You're not actualizing yourself. And that's very serious because, you know, it leads to feelings of regret. And I don't want that for you. I want you to have a happy life. I want you to have a successful life. I want you to be self-actualized. So here's what you're going to discover in our time today on this, this Google Hangout. You're going to discover the cutting edge mindset discovery I learned in Brazil that can really make this, the difference between success and disappointment in voiceover and in life. We're going to talk a lot about relentless self-criticism because I know people complain about that, whether it's you criticizing yourself or others criticizing you as you start to take these steps, these important steps in your life and in your career. And then we're going to do some more work around understanding Gricker so you can get yourself back on track. So you're in the right place on this live stream if you are a new beginner and you're thinking about getting started in voiceover and you want to do it the right way without spinning your wheels or wasting your time, you're smart to be here today. You're also in the right place if you've been talking and dreaming about doing voiceover and you know now's the time to take action. Uh, maybe you're newly retired or you're uh, uh, on the runway to retirement as I call it and you want to stay active. I mean boy there are millions and millions of baby boomers out there right now who are going into this exciting new phase in their life and and this is your time for you and maybe you've put in years and years in a career that okay it was good for you but you know you didn't love it so now's the time to get it right and a lot of people come to us for training and we we kind of specialize in working with people like that at the great voice company we honor that you're in this transitional phase in your life and uh, we want to support you in that and you know maybe you have joined some of the pay-to-play services like voice123 or voices.com there are thousands of people on those services and you're auditioning and you're auditioning but you're just not booking and you're very frustrated I mean you're investing all this time and energy into it and you're starting to wonder if if you made a mistake and this voiceover thing is really for you well you're on the right place you're in the right place you're on the right call if that is for you, if that is uh, who you are. And you're also in the right place if you've started to market yourself in voiceover and things are starting to happen for you. So maybe you booked a job or two, but then you're shocked that 
nervousness is coming up and suddenly you're developing mic fright or maybe even some strange symptoms like your throat is starting to get sore whenever you have to do auditions or you're finding yourself hoarse now by the way go to a doctor please I'm not a doctor I don't want to prescribe but if you ever have problems with your throat I want you to get a diagnosis but maybe you come from the doctor they say there's nothing wrong with you but yet you know your throat still hurts or you feel tightness whenever you go to work and do voice over something that you love but yet you're having what we call a, a, a somatization and uh, you know maybe there's some other reasons you're here too but I welcome you whatever the reason is that you decided to join me today so I want to do a little bit of a mindset exercise for you right now and I can't close my eyes with you because I'm on camera but I want you to take a moment and close your eyes right now so so do it get comfortable uh, just relax in your chair get a pan out by the way the handout for this program that I'm teaching you today is right here on this page we sent it a little earlier uh, we made it uh, <laughs> my, my assistant didn't send out the final version so I apologize for that but right now we have the final version right here on this page and it's nice and pretty and neat and clean and, and feel free to please download it right from this page so that you can follow along with me on the handout for today's call. So I want you to do a little bit of dreaming about your perfect day in voiceover. So what is that like? How does your day begin? You know, you is there is there a beautiful sunrise or are you you don't have to you don't have the alarm clock, you know, can you imagine because you're now now you're self-employed. So you, you get up early because you want to get a good start to the day, but you're now on your own clock, right? And you're super excited about what the day is going to bring for you. And so you pour yourself your favorite drink and you're living in exactly the place that you want to be living. I'm thinking about uh, one of our great voice coaches, Randy Dean, who just bought a place in Mexico so he's now spending every winter down there he lives in the, the frigid north I think he's living in Wisconsin the summers are beautiful but in the winter now he and his wife are able to get the heck out of there and go to their beautiful beachside home in Mexico where without missing a beat he is still able to serve his voiceover clients and how cool is that I know a number of people that have both summer and winter homes where they are able to uh, do their voiceover career from and that that would be me too I spend six weeks a year in Brazil and I don't miss a beat I have my portable gear that I take with me I'm able to still serve my customers so maybe that is a, a dream for you or maybe you don't want to go any further than your basement that's cool too I get it or, or a spare bedroom if you don't like to travel you just want to spend more time at home or maybe you want to be around your loved ones that is one of the great things about a career in voiceover or maybe you're like David Brower who is a, a student and a friend of mine who uh, is a motorcycle enthusiast he has a Harley he loves it and he and his wife get on that thing every summer and he puts his portable recording gear in the back of the bike and he hits the road and, and he does not miss a beat so whatever your dream is for voiceover I want you to imagine what that is for you right now and then you're gonna take the world's shortest commute into your home studio and I want you to just smell the aroma of that gear that fresh new gear I mean the studios have a have an aroma that I love you know I spent 15 years on the air and radio I work I used to work with Howard Stern and I you know as I worked in rock and roll radio and so I have a very some of my happiest times are behind the microphone and I was talking to my voice of her friend Bob Bergen who does a lot of animation voiceover the other day and he said you know he could live in the recording studio and so could I it's just it's just a wonderful place to be so I want you to imagine that as well and then I want you to think also about uh, what success will mean for you when your voiceover career is up and running what's that gonna mean I mean you know the, the financial freedom the pride that you feel when you hear your voice on television or radio or maybe people tell you they heard an audiobook that you did or you have really gotten to stretch and explore your creative potential what will that feel like maybe that you're realizing a lifelong dream I am every day I wake up and I thank God that I get to do 
what I love. And, uh, you know, ask any professional voice talent, any full-time voiceover artist, and they will tell you the same thing. It does not get any better than this. Life is good, and I want that for you. So I want to bring you back a little bit to reality and share with you why I'm doing this call today and, and tell you a little bit about my story. Now, as I was saying, I did start out in radio, and I, this was something I, I al I've always made my living with my voice, made my living behind the microphone, and was a music lover, you know, as a kid, so I, um, you know, wanted to, uh, always wanted to do radio. But but the problem was that um, when you start in radio, you just don't make any money. And I don't know if you know this about about that field or not. But uh, you know, the average disc jockey, if they're making twenty thousand dollars a year, it's a lot. But I was young, and what the heck, you know, I got all this free, all these free uh, records and tickets and fame and stuff like that. But I wasn't making any money at all, and I was able to get some pretty good radio jobs you know at one point I remember I was working in Florida at a uh, hundred thousand watt rock radio station and people were listening to me and you know tens of thousands were listening to me during afternoon drive time you know but I developed panic attacks now I don't know if you've ever had those but they can be extremely debilitating you know that's when you feel like you can't catch your breath and uh, it's just a very, very scary thing. Sometimes people feel like they're having a heart attack. And so I started suffering from this, and I had no idea why. Here I was, my career was taking off, things were going great for me, but yet I was feeling this, this anxiety that was so uncomfortable for me. And I, I used to put on long songs and go into the ladies' room to splash cold water on my face so I can continue with my show. That's how badly I was feeling. I remember one day I, I was having a panic attack um, that, and I, I just had to crawl out of the record, out of the studio, the air studio, to get to the ladies' room to put cold water on my face because I felt like if I stood up, I would pass out. I mean, it's it's not funny, you know, if you suffer from this. People really, really do suffer. So. I, j I just couldn't figure this out, and and I wasn't alone. You know, my coworkers in radio were in terrible shape too. There was a lot of alcohol abuse, a lot of drugs. Unfortunately, I never got into that, but people were in trouble. There were a lot of family problems, and I continued on. You know, somehow I made it to New York City, and I my radio career just kept getting better and better. I ended up on the Howard Stern show for a couple of years. I was a cast member. But you know, that crew wasn't any better than I was psychologically. I mean, Howard is famous and very open about the fact that he has obsessive compulsive disorder. He's very, uh, very anxious as a person. And the higher I got into show business, the more I saw people whose personal lives were, were just wrecks. And so was mine, you know? So my career started to take off and I, I built the Great Voice Company and I started training people and I built this wonderful audio production company that I have and I had uh, thousands and thousands of students as we, we do now. We've trained thousands of people and hundreds of, of voiceover clients and we um, you know started doing voices for phone systems in all languages and I hired employees and then I got married and I chose this man and I take responsibility for this but uh, you know my it was not a good marriage and it lasted for a while and um, he was very envious of my success and again this is very common in with successful people you just choose somebody who is not supportive of you and I went on and, and I things became very bad and uh, I became very ill actually I developed a very serious uh, physical illness uh, and I closed my business which was like I couldn't believe that because he he was encouraging me to do so and um, then I uh, you know I I got the help that I needed. I, I ran into, I started working with Dr. Kepi and his programs, and uh, this helped me. I'm going to give you some of the key distinctions that I took away from working with him and that still continue to help me today. 
and my marriage broke up and I continued on and uh, I am a lot better now. <laughs> I had a wonderful relationship. But I got my, my life back on track and uh, I wanted to share some of this with you. So I'm not telling you this to impress you but just to share with you that my life possibly like yours is, is no different. And I want to impress upon you the fact that personal and professional success can go hand on hand in hand. And you don't have to fear success or pay a high personal price for it. And most of all, you can overcome your fears and in, get the confidence you need to make it, not just in voiceover, but uh, in your personal life as well. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, I'm a beginner. I am haven't even gotten any training yet, I'm exploring this voiceover thing and shouldn't I wait until I get started before I concern myself with this inner game of voiceover that you're talking about and no, I say now is the perfect time because you really want to equip yourself with all the training tools that you need including the mindset piece of your training which is so important because you're going to invest a lot not just in in getting your skill set together but in getting your studio together and you know you're really going to go for this so I really want to equip you with all with everything that you need not just technically but also in a mindset sense as well so the reason you need this training and I you take a look at your handout because you can fill in some of the blanks right now the first one reason is to reduce frustration. That's the first fill in, fill in the blank. The second is to make yourself magnetic to success. What do I mean by that? I mean that when a person is confident and when they are dealing with some of these issues that hold them back, they are magnetic. Their energy level is a lot more buoyant and they really start attracting opportunity to themselves. Um, and actually that opportunity is there for us all the time but we block it unconsciously. So that's a part of the inner game of voiceover. The third reason you need this training is to keep you motivated. So what I find is that people have what, what I call the half-life of seminars. They get their training, they get all excited, and then after a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, every all that enthusiasm and excitement can fade and they just can't keep themselves motivated to keep going. So that's another reason that this training is very important. It's also important to reduce stress. Stress. And we know that the, least, the less stress you have, the better overall your health is going to be. The fifth reason you need this is to stop procrastination. Right? Huge issue for so many people of getting ready to get ready. It's procrastinating, knowing what you need to do, but just not getting around to doing it. The sixth reason is immunity to criticism. Now, criticism, it's its a strong word and nobody wants to think that, you know, they're going to start in voiceover and people are going to, you know, beat up on them and criticize them. But you want to have that strong self-resilience and immunity to any criticism that might come your way. And most importantly, self-criticism. We're going to talk a lot about that today. And then finally, you need this training so you can enjoy the satisfaction that comes and the pride you get from meeting your goals. So I, I just want to offer the opportunity for you to ask questions to me. You're going to do that by email today because we don't have the chat set up on, on this live stream. You're going to send your email to info at greatvoice.com, info at greatvoice.com with questions in the subject line. So feel free, my assistant Christina will take a look at it and will get that um, in here for me so that I can at some point during this uh, training I will be able to answer some of your questions and you can keep sending them after today's training is done because I, I can answer some offline as well. So questions go to info at greatvoice.com with questions in the subject line. So let's talk about the five biggest mindset myths to voiceover success. This is on your handout, which is right here on this page. You can print it out. So the first myth is the myth of positive thinking. 
Now, I'm a big fan of positive thinking. I, I'm a big fan of setting your intention and of writing down your goals, all of that. That stuff works. But positive thinking alone is not going to get you where you need to be in your voiceover career. And why is that? Because a lot of what's stopping you is unconscious. It's invisible. You are not seeing the roadblocks, as we could call them, to success. You're not seeing certain attitudes in your inner life. They're invisible. They're unconscious to you. So positive thinking will only go so far. Second reason is, second myth, is the myth of bad programming. The myth of bad programming. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of people think that the reason they're not successful in life is because of their upbringing and their parents. And certainly that makes a difference. I mean, you know, a lot of people come from some tough backgrounds. But if this were the case, how come some people have really tough backgrounds that are able to really lift themselves up to success? But even more important, how come some people have wonderful parents and, and a great childhood and a great upbringing and are failures and are really, really struggling? So bad programming or even good programming is really a myth when it comes to success. The third myth is the fear of success. This is a huge one that many, many people have. And the problem is not exactly the fear of success. It is, and this is big, you can take, make a note here, hidden and inverted ideas about goodness. Now this whole concept of inversion is, is a very huge concept of Dr. Kepi's and we're going to talk a lot about more about that in this call and I get deeply into this in, in all of my trainings, my mindset trainings. But what Dr. Kepi found is that goodness is unconsciously very difficult for us to accept. And I'll explain more about that in a little while because I know this is a new concept for you and it's a little bit counterintuitive. So it's not exactly that you're afraid of success, but that unconsciously the goodness of success is difficult to, success, to accept. The next myth is the myth of the dangers of success. So we think unconsciously that if we share and use our talents in some way, we'll be harmed by it. And again, this is not clearly perceived by most people. But if you reach beneath the surface a little bit, you might see you have a little bit of this. You know, so some people think that, wow, you know, if I get very successful, uh, my marriage will suffer, or my life will suffer in some way, or people won't like me. Uh, if I'm successful, I'll lose friends, I'll lose family members. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes it is very difficult for people to deal with success if you do better than they do. But this is more like the exception. Success is not harmful in any way. It's a good thing. We want it. So unconsciously, though, we might have ideas that it is harmful to us. And the final myth about success is the myth of leisure. And what I mean by that is that people unconsciously feel that success is hard work. And it is. It does take hard work to become a successful person in life and in voiceover. However, people think that work is bad for them, that somehow it will exhaust them and wear them out. And again, it's un conscious but a lot of people have this idea this is a, an inverted idea so Dr. Kepi's key discovery about the human being is that we are upside down that we are inverted so we have a huge inversion about work that work uh, is so bad for us and we if but but really what work does when it's good work when it's healthy work is it's super energizing so yes I understand that some of you are in jobs that want blood and I'm very sensitive to that. So sometimes, you know, you have to make ends meet and so you have to, you know, work your butt off for something that you don't really believe in and that might not be so good, you know, maybe maybe people are dishonest or you're not well treated, but you have to do it. So then that of course is exhausting. So this is not what I'm talking about. 
but you now are on the verge of starting a career and enhancing a career where you are going to be your own boss. It is voiceover. It's in the arts. It's something creative that has tremendous value for people. You're going to be developing a skill and an ability that is uniquely yours that not everybody has. Not all everybody is gifted with their voice. You know, don't take that for granted. It's a very special gift that you have. And you now have the opportunity to take and develop that gift in a way that will not only make your life better, but make other people's lives better as well. So that's something that's work, worth working hard for. And that is something that will give you so much energy that at the end of the day, you might work 12 hours on your voiceover career and be tired. It's a good tired and you will sleep like a baby and wake up in the morning refreshed and excited and you can't wait to get back to work to do it again. Make sense? I hope so. This is what I want for you. So let's get to the three key points that I have to share with you today and I uh, just want to remind you again that if you have questions for me please uh, send them to info at greatvoice.com put questions in the subject line and Christina will bring them in to me. The first point is the cutting edge mindset discovery that makes the difference between success and disappointment in voiceover and in life. And this is what I've been kind of hinting at, that human beings are inverted. Write down the word inverted on your handset, uh, handout. This is a unique discovery of Dr. Kepi. In, in the 1970s, after working with hundreds and hundreds of clients, at his clinic. Now, Dr. Kepi, as I was saying, is a psychoanalyst and he's a renowned author and researcher in human potential. He discovered that uh, human beings, because of this resistance they have to goodness in their life, uh, uh, to love and to development, are actually unconsciously upside down and inverted. So I have on your handout something that um, a quote from Kepi where he speaks about the psychological life and on your handout there's a page with an iceberg on it and I just want to read you this quote from one of Kepi's books which is called The Origin of Illness and it is available on Amazon if you want a deeper learning around that. He says that generally speaking people spend their lives waiting for something good to come from outside when it already exists inside their being without their having the slightest idea of what this is. In other words, consciousness of good is the most difficult thing to accept because perception itself is one of the greatest gifts of all. So this is, is deep, I know. It's deep. But you have it on your handout. You can read this again and again and think about this. It comes from Kepi's book, The Origin of Illness, which will explore this whole thing in depth. But let's say let's think about this for a second. Generally, how conscious are we of our inner lives? Most people don't have a clue. That jerk in traffic doesn't have a clue. Maybe some of the people, your friends, your family members, your coworkers are not conscious of what they're doing. Most of us are kind of in a fog. So, yet our inner life is huge. It determines our success. I think it, it was uh Jung, the psychoanalyst uh, Carl Jung, who said regarding the inner life, know me, or is, he said it's like the Sphinx in, in Egypt, know me or I will devour you. So Freud's great discovery was that we have this unconscious part of ourselves, and we know that through our dreams and through hypnosis and slips of the tongue that people make. And I want to give you a couple of examples that it's, are going to really clarify this. And these are extreme examples, but they're true. Uh, the first is of an entrepreneur. Now, this guy built a very successful computer company. But after a while, he started hiring the wrong people. He neglected his business. He neglected updates. He stopped his marketing campaigns. And eventually he went broke and he had to close his business and he and his wife moved into a small apartment and now she supports him. Now this is a situation we've seen over and over again. You ever watch a, a show on television on the Food Channel uh, about restaurants 
and the sh chef, I think it's Robert Irvine comes in, I forget the name, the name is escaping me right now, but these restaurant owners ha you know, have failing businesses, he swoops in with his team, he makes the restaurants fantastic, and then they do a PS at the end of the show, which like two months later, the restaurant owner is in trouble again. So why does this happen? It happens over and over again. So Kepi says that humans suffer from an unconscious resistance to goodness. If we don't pay attention to this pathology, it dominates us. People attack the best and the most important things that they have without perceiving it. It's as if we can't stand too much goodness in our life. So this, this entrepreneur unconsciously made bad decisions that undermined his company. So on this page you see an iceberg. At the tip of the iceberg is how, what he's aware of about his life. He thinks he's a good manager in control of a situation and he thinks he, he has great ideas but unconsciously his intention is to spoil something beautiful that he built. Now I know this is a, a little difficult to, you know, to think about but it is very useful to have this awareness because uh, it'll keep you from making some big, big, big mistakes in your life. Here's another example. Now this is a famous one, one of many famous people who have done this. World famous soprano Maria Callas. So I don't know if you've, you've probably heard her, her name. She's in the opera world. She's, she's passed on now. But, but when she was 34, she began a love affair with Aristotle Onassis. And he despised her voice and her career and humiliated her about it. And she quit singing, left the opera in order to stay with him. Nine years later, he left her for Jackie Kennedy, and she was never able to recover her voice or her incredible career. I get, I get like chills when I hear this. It's just such a terrible story. But what went wrong? I mean, Callis left the opera. Rationally, she said, you know, I've had enough. I, I want a, a husband. I want a, I want a family. I want a dog. You know, I want to live out in the country. But by her actions, we see she wanted something else. Her relationship with Onassis shows that unconsciously she despised her own talent and used the relationship with Onassis to attack and destroy something unique and very beautiful she had to give the world. Now hopefully you have not had flagrant crash and burns like this in your life, but can you identify with either of these examples just a little bit? Just a little bit. It's very, very healthy and helpful to do so. And I want you to take a few minutes to reflect on this. You know, when we close the, the call today, uh, you'll have plenty of time to do so, you know, and you, you can keep thinking about this. And if you don't see it in your own life, maybe you know people that this has happened to one way or another. And, and I know that this is a very big idea that I just introduced, a little painful perhaps to see. But don't worry, I will be telling you how we can get together and explore this even more deeply before the end of the call. So I do have some questions. And let me take a quick look. Now, people are sending me very specific questions about <laughs> how to have a home studio and how many hours a week are needed to make this work and uh, that, that his day job is blah, blah, blah. You know, these are very practical questions. So the, I, these are great questions, and I think I'm going to need to answer them separately in a report because they don't have to do with mindset. They're, they have to deal with specifics about about uh, getting started in voiceover and, and we'll, I will address them, I promise you. I will send them out on, a, on another um, communication with you. But today we're talking about our inner life. So if you have specific questions about that, any uh, mindset issues you're having around starting your voiceover career, send those to info at greatvoice.com with questions in the subject line. So the next point I want to make is how to deal with criticism. And there are two types of criticism. One is criticism from other people, and the second is from being your own worst critic. And I, I want let's start with the one from other people. So often this is caused by envy, and you know what this is when you see people. Uh, a person, for example, watches a performance or a, um, 
and is more focused on the fact that the uh, conductor's bow tie is crooked. <laughs> So they're not focusing, they're not enjoying the orchestra, but they're looking at the conductor's bow tie the whole time. Or somebody gives a, a talk and they spend the whole time, rather than benefiting from what the speaker has to share, counting the ums. This is envy. They said about Fred Astaire, he had a nice voice and he can dance a little. And, you know, recently I gave a talk at a conference and people loved it. They told me afterwards they loved it. But one guy came up to me and said, you know, that was a great talk, but... <laughs> so that but indicates that people are feeling envy about you. So if you are not having the support of your friends and your family, it could be that they are uncomfortable that you are going for your dreams and they are not. So that's what we call envy. They can't, they're having a tough time not just seeing and accepting your goodness, but actually their own. And so they are now looking at you as somebody who's going for goodness in their life and thinking somehow that that's making them less. You know, it's focusing them on they're becoming more aware of uh, the fact that they have not moved ahead in their life. So you do have to be prepared for that from some friends and some families and you know stick around people who are more supportive of the fact that you are building your voice over career but your worst critic is actually your inner critic and what this how this manifests is that we hear our voice in recordings and we, we start to feel really really critical about ourselves we feel as if um, our voice is letting us down that sometimes you can't get your voice to do what you want or you are, have to do a million takes um, or there's something that I call voice booth paranoia and maybe you've experienced this before if you've ever, so what happens, this is very very common in voiceover, so you have a job, you're, you're in a recording studio you're performing and there's the engineer and the client on the other side of the glass and then they hit what's known as the talkback switch which is what they use to communicate with you and then they say okay hang on a minute and you can't hear them but you can see their mouth moving and what happens is it's really really common for the talent to start thinking oh my goodness they're talking about me they don't like me they are saying bad things and a producer friend of mine told me once that the talent actually came out of the voice booth and said okay I know you don't like me and and you made a big mistake to hire me and that was not what they were saying at all they were actually rewriting the script or in some case cases they're ordering lunch right they're not talking about you but yet we think that they are so we can be our own worst critics so what's going on well most of us or the shy person actually we don't want to expose our mistakes and this is completely understandable but mistakes will inevitably appear when we take action so this is a big reason why people don't do anything uh, to promote their voiceover career why they get stuck because they know that as soon as they take action what's going to happen mistakes will start to appear and they have an image of themselves that is very perfectionistic they feel as if um, you know they, they can't do that they can't allow any mistakes to be to prefer to appear so so very often uh, if a person is shy or timid or you know f holding themselves back it's because it's hard for them to see any mistakes in themselves and they, they can't accept the fact that they're beginners and of course you're gonna make mistakes so at my upcoming uh, Marketing Mindset <laughs> event in Atlanta, I'm going to let you in on some of the big mistakes that I've made in my life just to kind of make you feel a little bit better that every successful person has gone through this. You know, people have had bankruptcies. Donald Trump talks about this. But the important thing about success is something I call fail forward. You're going to miss many more auditions than you book, but you have to get up to the plate more you know that's just that's just a fact of life so this is uh, a deep thing but here's here's a tip that I'm gonna give you whenever you do an audition before you send it off 
at the end of the day, I, be, I want the final thought you should be having when you when you've got to, when you do that take that you think is the best that you can do is that to make this about them and their script because this product this audition is somebody else's baby and when you're hyper focused on yourself and your performance your mind is in, is actually in the wrong place you you should be more focused on the customer on the client and you should ask the universe to give you the strength to do the best for them because the more focused you are on yourself and your performance the more you're listening the more self-critical you are it's just the more that it isn't going to work so uh, you have to take the focus off yourself and put it on service and I think that that's going to really help you reduce a lot of the nervousness you have and again we're going to be spending so much more time on this in my inner game of voiceover marketing and mindset retreat some more questions coming in great Chris thank you so much okay so if somebody asks how do you set the proper mindset and maintain it when you haven't established yourself in the voiceover industry yet and I think that that's a great question uh, and the, the answer is the mindset piece whether you've established yourself or not the second you you know it doesn't stop the self-doubt doesn't necessarily stop when you become successful you it just gets to a new and a different level so the way that you maintain it I mean just in a nutshell is to become aware that we have this upside down idea about our success and the more we are open to taking a look at it and how it manifests the more comfortable that you're going to be somebody else says that they've been uh, around the voiceover business voice 2012 and they can't get motivated and get involved and get started how do they get motivated well um, this is exactly what we're going to be dealing with at my voiceover marketing and mindset retreat because lack of motivation can have to do with a lot of these issues around perfectionism and once I get to work with you privately and we'll be doing uh, I don't want to call them hot, hot seats but I'll have an opportunity to really work with you one-on-one -on -one at that event and step you through step by step what the cause of a lack of motivation is so that you can keep going with your voiceover career uh, how do you get beyond procrastination so often what procrastination is is really a way of being afraid of seeing that we make mistakes because when we take action what happens we start to get consciousness of how we unconsciously are holding ourselves back does that make sense to you I hope so so often what the procrastinator doesn't want to do is take that first action because what that's going to do is show them what they don't know and the great thing about voiceover is that it is not a live medium and there are many wonderful wonderful producers and voice buyers out there that will be gentle with you of course you're gonna to have to be trained and show up professionally but they know that we make mistakes when we read scripts you'll be able to do another take they will work with you they will shape you and it's gonna be so exciting for you but if you don't even take the first step but you'll see lots of mistakes you know the more you do it and as you go along you'll start to see mistakes but it's not brain surgery so as you go along the procrastination is gonna get better and better okay now I've got some other questions I don't I don't I want to go through my material and then I'm I, these are great questions that are coming in so thank you guys please keep sending them to me at uh, at info at greatvoice.com with questions that I really want to take what I'm gonna do after today's live stream is I'm gonna put a special report together would that be helpful for you where I can really talk think about these and answer these in depth for you because they're super questions that you guys are answer asking me like uh, how do positive affirmations work into the accomplishment of goals do I have meditations or inspirational quotes to keep your mindset on the right track and I do uh, how do gold goal setting and business plans work into it how do you keep motivated every day and focus and learn something new every day and on and on and on great questions and so I'm gonna 
work on these after we finish today and I will answer those for you offline so you can have them. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit more about Gritger. And before I do, I want you to, right on this page is a link and it's for uh, my VO Mindset event. I want you to go on over there, take a look at what I'm doing in Atlanta and see if this is something that's right for you. Might not be, it's not right for everybody, but I'm going to be spending four days, four days, <laughs> three days with you and we already have a good group of people that have signed up for this event. It's new, it's updated and, and what I'm going to do is share with you my updated marketing blueprint on how to get work in voiceover and you're actually going to get many of your marketing pieces taken care of while you're at the event such as what do you do if you're taking one step forward and one step back you know that's what it can seem like uh, how do you get to the bottom of this unconscious resistance that so many people are experiencing are you in the dark about where to find the best voice buyers and your favorite, your best niche for your voice? You know, there's 14 niche markets. Well, I do have a system that's going to help you do that. It's called the Monetize Your Voice system. Are you surprised by how nervous and uncomfortable you feel behind the mic? I mean, even so, some of the most outwardly extroverted people, like the people that are writing to me right now, are telling me that they're feeling uncomfortable. And I'm going to help you get to the root of the problem so you can regain your confidence and poise when you perform it, and especially if you're just starting out, as I know many of you are. Are you stumped about what to say on the phone to open doors? I have scripts. I have templates. We're going to role play. You're going to get checklists. You're going to know exactly what to do. Do you have doubts about your potential, and is that affecting your performance and keeping you up at night? I mean, are you performing, enjoying yourself on the one hand, but are you getting these thoughts that, you know, gee, has it all been a horrible, terrible mistake? I, mean, I remember I had those thoughts when I started my career. I was in radio and we used to do what are called air check sessions where I would actually sit with my boss, my program director, and I'd be listening to the sound of my voice and I, was, I would think, I remember this, I would be thinking, people are actually paying me to do this I can't stand the way I sound I, I was waiting for somebody to call me up and say it's all been a horrible terrible mistake so you know we do have these doubts and I, I know you do have them too and I and I'm sensitive to that and I've got help for you are you confused about your website with my help you are gonna see your website taking shape be, uh, before your very eyes we're gonna actually write your some of your key website copy while you're at the event we're going to get you some of your key marketing pieces done. We're going to set a plan. This person uh, wrote to me about a business plan. We're going to work on that. Um, your step-by-step -step marketing calendar for the rest of the year. What do you do to prevent these endless auditions that you're not booking? Well, I, unlike a lot of other people, I have a, a plan for you to get in front of prospects and customers where you're not even auditioning. You are the game in town. And uh, this is my famous marketing plan that has worked for so many of our students. And you're going to find out all about it when you, when you click the link on this page and go on over to VOMindset.com. Uh, uh, how about quoting your rates? What do you say? What do you put in your home studio? We're going to cover that too. Well, I want you to relax and take a deep breath because I'm going to help you with your rate sheet and coach you on the best way to, to uh, present that. And we're going to talk all about the latest with social media. You know, I'm constantly studying this and I'm going to help you with what is working and what is not um, and all of that. On and on and on. It's all at the inner game of voiceover right here on the page. And it's coming up October 4th through 6th in Atlanta. So, again, I just want to say this is new stuff. It is completely updated for 2013. I am adding this huge mindset piece to it that I haven't really talked about in depth before, interwoven with all the marketing stuff. And we're going to have a talent show. So if you sing, if you play, if you perform, and maybe you're a comic, I mean, we've had storytellers. It's just fantastic. You can. Uh, we're going to have this talent show at the event as well on one of the evenings. It is so much fun. Now let's talk about the investment because I've got some great news for you. 
some people are going to pay as much as 1997 for the three days in Atlanta. We uh, have just ended our early bird special, which that price is, is $7.97. It ended yesterday, but here's what I'm going to do. I was in Brazil, and I didn't do all the marketing that I wanted to for this event to let you know about uh, the deadline for the early bird special, which was yesterday. So because you're on this call today, because you're in this live stream, I'm going to expand it. I'm going to extend it through Friday, August 9th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you register for my inner game of voiceover, uh, you're going to get that $797 early bird price through Friday, August the 9th. And I also want to tell, uh, tell you about some great fast action bonuses that I've added for the first seven people who register right now. Okay? And you can hop right on to VOMindsetEvent.com. The link is right here on this page. You will get a certificate for a private 30 minute laser focused coaching call with me. And the first 25 people that register will get a certificate for an in depth voiceover website review. I'm going to do that um, some months after the event because I know you might need some time to put your website together. But we will do that for you to help keep you on track with that. I know that's a huge question that people have. So go on over to VOMindsetEvent.com. If you have to consult with your spouse, I suggest you register now anyway. We do have um, a, a generous cancellation policy for this event. So you can, um, you know, if, if your plans change, I mean, obviously, of course, I don't want you to register unless you really think that you can come. But if your plans change, you have up to 30 days before the event, uh, which is October 4th through 6th, to, uh, to get a refund. And I have some guarantees for you. I am so confident you are going to love the inner game of voiceover marketing and mindset event and my monetize your voice system that I have two guarantees. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. Take the, the come to the event, and if on lunch, by lunchtime on the second day, you don't, you think this is not for you, just tell a member of my staff in the back of the room and we will refund your money. Just turn your notebook in, we will refund your money because that's how strongly I, I believe in this and I know that this is going to work for you and I have a second guarantee that is even more powerful. I want you to spend, take an entire year to to um, implement what you're going to learn October 4th through 6th at my inner game of voiceover marketing and mindset event, an entire 365 days. And if at any time during the next year you feel you try it out and you can show me what you've done and you come back to me and you say, you know, this hasn't worked, I did this, I did this, I did this, and you can show me what you've done, I will refund your money up to 365 days after the event. So can I be any more fair than, fair than that? The place you go now is to the link right here on this page, VOMindsetEvent.com. And of course, uh, we're here for you if you have questions. So thank you, Christina. I see we have a ton of questions coming in. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to answer them for you right now. See what I can do to, um, to answer some of these. I'm flying without a net. I'm going to do this for you. Okay. So can you repeat the seven items on the on the first page? Let me see if I can do that for you. You know what? I'm gonna f I'll, I'll just fill out I'll fill out the form and I'm gonna repost it right here on this page. How's that? That that I think will be the best thing to do. Okay. So give me about an hour after we close and we'll we'll po we, we'll post the handout filled out right here on this page or we'll email it to you. Okay. So I'll handle that. So how do you? Let's see. Let's see. Do positive affirmations work? I want to answer that one right now. Listen, I, as I said earlier, I'm not against doing positive affirmations and setting your intention. There's some magic in that. However, what you need to understand is there are hidden factors at work here that, that we're like an iceberg. There's a whole hidden part of ourselves that we're not aware of that determines our success or our failure and mostly it's like we have one foot on the gas and one foot on the brakes and it's this inner hidden resistance that we have to learn to work with if you want to be successful and this frankly 
is why affirmations and power of attraction stuff only goes so far because we are not aware we don't see this resistance that we have to our success which is unconscious and it's a resistance against goodness and this is what we're going to explore in the inner game of voiceover marketing and mindset event this is dr kepi's magnificent work of uh, after 50 years of, of clinical research so um, unfortunately we can't get the job done with affirmations because if that were the case I would be <laughs> you know incredible <laughs> right now and I'm not <laughs> I've got my issues and my problems because I tried affirmations they do not work <laughs> they don't work to the to the point that I think we want to okay so somebody else has um, a very good career in IT and doesn't know if they'll be in good as, as good in voiceover as in a current his current successful career where they already work from home how do they get away from this mindset uh, they say their current career is not a warranty in the future and having something else to fall back on is one reason that they're looking into voiceover great question I bet there's a lot of people watching this this uh, live stream right now that are in the exact same situation as you are right now and the answer is um, what you do is what I do is you don't quit your day job on what I did actually when I was starting my voiceover career uh, I kept working in radio for about six months till I felt secure and confident that this I was making enough income that this was something that I could be doing on a full-time basis now in your case uh, my suggestion is that you try to do both at the same time you want to keep food on the table you want to take care of yourself and and it is going to take a little while to get things up and running and and most people actually do voiceover part-time it's tough to spend eight hours a day on this you know so the, one of the wonderful things about it is that you make full-time money with part-time work okay somebody else says getting the first jo paying job is the hardest otherwise mentally you feel you're not credible as a professional okay great great question because is which is how do you get started when you are um, you don't have anything to fall back on you know that first job is always the hardest but I believe me you're gonna get through it when you come to my inner game of voiceover marketing and mindset event I am gonna work with you so that you understand how to behave like a professional so, so nobody will even question that you haven't done this before and before you know it you're going to have the experience you need or you'll get through that first job and the rest will be a breeze for you okay so it's a great question okay what's the biggest mistake first-time voice talent make and that's a good thank you very much for reminding me because I've been really getting into the material the biggest mistake that first-time voice talent make is that uh, they don't realize that what they don't see about themselves is responsible for their success or their failure in this career so uh, they and the biggest mistake is that that mindset is as important as your demo and your training and your home studio so you have done some great work on overcoming this big mistake because you've been on this live stream today with me and you know there's a lot more if you want deeper learning I've got it for you so that uh, you can really give yourself the leg up everything you need to succeed okay once you have a demo reel and training what's the next step how do you get the proper training I'm gonna answer that for you off line and the rest unfortunately I'm looking at the clock we are over time right now somebody wrote great session I was all excited about pursuing my career when I suddenly lost confidence and felt paralyzed and overwhelmed I doubted whether or not I had what it took to be successful based upon this session my concerns are very common it's very helpful I'm very interested in the Atlanta session although I've not yet registered so welcome aboard what what's keeping you what a great thank you so much for writing that um, this is going to be an event like nothing else you know click the link on the page or give us a call right now at 800-333-8108 Bill our talent advisors here if you want to talk to him 800-333-8108 I welcome you aboard remember the first seven people are going to get that 30 minute one-on-one -on -one consultation for me that's that's a, a $600 value and we are extending our early bird discount 
until next Friday, August the 9th. And you know what? I also have a great deal at the hotel. This is going to be at the Sheraton Gateway Hotel at the Atlanta Airport. Super easy to get to. Uh, the room rates are only $92. What could be better than that? And we will also have a Facebook page up for everybody that's registered. We have a good number already. And so you might even be able to find a room share. So I think that that's, that's just about everything I have to share with you today. And I am going to get to your questions offline. I'll put a report together, as I promised. Uh, we are going to rebroadcast this. We'll make the recording of today's live stream available to you. You guys are the best. I love you. <laughs> I can't wait to work with you face to face. I know some of you have been following me for years and years and years. Um, you know, I having you in my life is one of the great pleasures of being a successful voice talent because it's being able to give back is that makes this so much fun and to meet some of the greatest, coolest people from all over the country that come and, and work with us. So thank you for taking the time to be with me today. I will see you soon. I'm going to do more of these. Bye-bye. Thanks. Now, how do I stop this broadcast? Let's do this. Have a great night, everybody.